Hi, it's Kurt here from City Campus, and uh, we're uh, we're continuing our series of devotionals on the uh, on the books of the Bible. And uh, I hope you'll take a second and uh, subscribe to our YouTube feed. And if you're uh, watching this on Facebook, if you could, uh, or if you're actually you link to it on Facebook, when you go back to Facebook. If you would just go ahead and share the link, that'd be awesome. And they give us a chance to share Christ's word. And let's go ahead and get to our study because uh, we've got our third uh, time of going, our third uh, Pauline pastoral epistles today. Ooh, it sounds exciting. Let's, uh, let's go have a look. So when we talk about the pastoral epistles, of course, one of our New Testament books that we're going through, we're talking about uh, First and Second Timothy and Titus. And today we're talking about Titus, the 17th book in the New Testament. And again, much like uh, First and Second Timothy, this is a pastor advising another younger pastor. <clears throat> and the other two, of course, Timothy was being advised, and now it's Titus. And there's a big focus on leadership. The keywords here are leadership and encouragement, as Titus is being encouraged by Paul. Chapter one is about appointing mature elders who are faithful. Uh, that's key to a church's growth, key to a church's um, effectiveness. And also the fact that you can't let uh, loose talk get away, right? If you get, if you have a talk in the church and it's a lot of church, it's not about Jesus, it's not about his church, you shouldn't let that rise up and take over. And that's kind of what Paul's saying here. Uh, chapter two is about how Christians of all types should act. He mentions older and younger men, older and younger women and slaves or servants or, or workers, you might say, today. And one of the big focuses is that the older should teach the younger. I think that's, uh, think, think that's really important, right? Sometimes it can go the other way. In the case of uh, Titus and Timothy, they were both younger teaching older people. And then a, a section on living right lives. We're going to read a passage about that here in just a second. And then uh, chapter three is about obeying the government, doing good, um, and remembering Christ died for us when we were disobedient. We're going to have a passage about that too. In fact, I've selected two that have to do with those two sections. And uh, one here is uh, Titus three or two, 12 and 13. I'm going to move myself out of the way so we can all see the, the passage. Uh, Titus 2, 12 and 13 says, and we are instructed to turn from godless living and sinful pleasures. We should live in this evil world with wisdom, righteousness, and devotion to God. While we look forward and hope to that wonderful day when the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, will be revealed. And I think that's really simple, right? You know, living, we, 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 we don't want to do any of those things that happen in the world, but we have to live in it. And so while we're living in this world where, you know, godless living and sinful pleasure are happening, we can live here with wisdom, righteousness, and devotion to God. And people are going to see that and go, what the heck is going on with that person? Titus 3, 4, and 7 talks about Jesus and about his relationship and how God dealt with us. And he says, but when God, our Savior, revealed his kindness and love, he saved us, not because of the righteous things we had done, but because of his mercy. He washed away our sins, giving us new birth, and new life through the Holy Spirit. He generously poured out the Spirit upon us through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Because of his grace, he made us right in his sight and gave us confidence that we will inherit eternal life. And I think that is just so key, right? Titus reminds us that Jesus didn't die for us because we were good. He died for us because we needed it. We needed it in a way that you know, I don't think you and I can really understand quite well enough. We're just not good people. You think you are? You're not, right? I know I'm not. And uh, I know where I'm at. Let's, let's pray together. God, we love you. Uh, we're just really <laughs> thankful that you love us enough to come when we were still sinners, when we were still disobedient, when we were still in our sins. And you saved us anyway that free gift of, uh, of eternal life. Thank you. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. 
And uh, we'll see you guys tomorrow. Have a great day.